Hi, I'm Corey, and I have too many tapes. Have you ever seen something so wildly nonsensical that you feel like you thought it up in a dream? So bizarrely unreal that it feels like you're taking a Voight Kampf test? To make a long story short, this is the Knock Knock Show. Okay, so this thing is for kids, like little kids. It only ran on CBN for a smattering of episodes in the late 90s, and it's easy to see why. It just looks so expensive. And not in the spared, no expense sort of way, more in the threw all of their spaghetti at the wall sort of way. What is that sound effect? I didn't add that in. Let's hear that again. It's like somewhere between the Nickelodeon splat noise and something a little bit more gross. Oh dear god, we're just going headfirst into nightmares. This set is like something out of a nightmare Pee Wee Herman had once. And this guy? I mean, it's just the kid show from Spy Kids, right? Floops Fooglies? But with no Alan Cumming and a whole lot of moderately offensive baby talk that mostly just sounds like making fun of people with speech impediments. The point here seems to be to make Woody look like a kid's drawing. It mostly just makes him look like he's uncomfortably into wearing rubber and vinyl. Like he's just into it, you know, like it's his thing. I'm the big rubber boy. That plastic wig must have been torture to film in. Hot lights, a rubber shirt, long hours. Turn that wig over and put a spoon in it and you've got some piping hot evangelical consomme. Ew, why did I say that? Lollipops, I like lollipops. Do you like lollipops? Yeah! There are like three kids in this audience. Anytime they ask a question, they get like two to four answers in unison from the hostages. I get that this is for kids, but this is just so inane. My friend Larry, um, he has his friend named Russ. What relevance does this... Well, he's got Fred, his pet hippopotamus. It's hippopotamus. Now get it right or pay the price. And on his ear live ten red mats. What? Eight are thin and two are fat. I have nothing for this. It's just long. Just so long. It has nothing to do with anything. There's Bobby, Shelly, Larry. We're learning so much about these gnats. There's no plot. We're just meandering through a stream of consciousness that happens to pass through the nightmare world. And one guy I've yet to meet. Ten gnats. Hey, would you help me count them? Sure. That would be fun. Now we're counting them. Okay. One. And they're tea posing. Is this educational? Was this edited in PowerPoint? Let me introduce them to you. We've already met them, Nightmare Child. You don't have to introduce them again. <laughs> mm, so many lollipops, so little time. Did that all go through his head while he was thinking about lollipops? Another gross splat. Ugh. And look, there's thick, and then there's whatever the mom is. She's a trapezoid. Are we into trapezoids now? Oh, hi, Woody. And here's Dory. She has a horrifying Betty Boop voice. I'm sure this isn't going to be grating for the next 26 minutes. No. She's about this high. Uh, no. Woody, did you get another home run? Uh-huh. The music here is suggesting wacky hijinks, but it's mostly just time-filling patter between two characters we don't really know and don't really like. No, later. A knock knock song! Come on! And now we splat our way into another world with expensive looking 2D animation to announce the song with a song. <laughs> We've gone into the Flugly verse. This is not a good sign. H O N E S T Y. Honesty! Is what you need inside. This song is kind of nothing. A little obnoxious, but most kids' show songs are. It's almost like the kids' show writers were secret sadists who wanted to torture parents indirectly. The woman who plays Dory looks so miserable doing this choreography. 
I would be too if I had to dance in a repainted giant cardboard megaphone. Side of me and honesty. It's just so plain to see that I feel the best and I'm happiest with honest me. Quick guess, this episode's about honesty. This show is filled with wonderful storytelling tricks. Like for instance, here we have an instance of dramatic irony, because the audience already knows that, wait, they're all three? They forgot. Okay, let's go see the lollipops then. Now I saved up all my money so I could buy lollipops for all my friends. Be a friend, friend, oh how nice. I really want to believe that they're paying homage to Max Headroom, but these people aren't cool enough to have seen Max Headroom. One for Doctor Who? One for Wrong Door Duck, two, Next Door Duck, three, me, four, you, five, Miss Twinkles, six. There's no six! There's... no six? I take it all back. I'm in. I'm good. This is a mystery now. Lead us to the truth, Nightmare Children. I'm sure I had six! Oh. Oh no, she's gone full Lucille Ball. You never go full Lucille Ball. Let's go ask Doctor Who. Doctor Who? Yeah, she's smart. Yeah, she can help us find the missing lollipop. Doctor Who's a woman? This show really is ahead of its time. And relative dimensions in space. One, two, three. No, no. Oh, 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 my, who's there? We are Doctor Who. Liars! Liars and cheats! I was promised Doctor Who. This is a common owl. The only thing she knows is how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop. One of my lollipops is missing! Somebody stole it! Oh, I see! Honestly, I'm just glad that one of these videos finally has at least a third of a plot we can follow. Why, thank you, Dory! That's sweet of you! Get it? Sweet? Candy? Sweet? <laughs> Oh well. You know what they say, always cut on a terrible pun. It's the first rule of film school. Now we have an animated segment that looks kind of weirdly like another early 2000s show with a wildly different tone. The Oblongs. You've got to be joshing me. Way, way back, a long time ago, during the part of the Bible called the Old Testament, lived a man named Joshua. Ah dang, it's another Bible lesson in the style of a silent movie, because two-year-olds just can't get enough of Fatty Arbuckle. Just Google him. Look, we're just gonna fast forward through this. Yada yada yada, don't steal, evil duck, karate battles. Ah, monsters! We fast forwarded our way into hell. Are these what the main characters are supposed to look like? We're gonna hear this song a lot, aren't we? Can we please just move this along? We just keep popping into segments that have nothing to do with the world's most pressing mystery. You should go on a search and look for your lollipop. I with spies? Well, how about detectives? Yeah, we can look for clues. You've got the idea. Will you help us? Okay. Yeah. Oh, I have something that can help you. Go and look at those boxes right there. You fool. You incompetent, you child. Hand me your badge and your gun. Okay, they spent all their 2D money on the Oblongs guy. Back to PowerPoint. Wait, those aren't... Those are... Those are 3D shapes. Jack! Jack, you... This is supposed to be educational programming, and maybe I'm being pedantic, but you gotta have standards. You know what it is? A circle! Got this one when I was two. Can you guess what it is? A dog! A square! A circle, a square, a rectangle, and a triangle. If I was a kid, I'd feel insulted by this. Yeah. Let's name them again, okay? Great. Okay! Sphere. Circle. Cube. Square. Cone. Triangle. Rectangular prism. Rectangle. My name is Jack and I love grapes. 
and I like collecting shapes. Rectangles, triangles, squares. My and Marge has circle hair. Why? Why did any of that happen? Why has any of this happened? What? What relevance did that have to the plot? Why did we need to meet Jack? What did any of that mean? I'm being led down a path of evil. I have to stay strong. Let's get back to the Nightmare Twins. Cool, a recorder. That's to record your voice as you find clues and put the pieces together on who- Yes, detective tools. This is important. This means something. This show is frustrated at its own existence. It strains at the knowledge that it isn't accomplishing what it set out to accomplish. I feel bad making fun of it. It's like rubbing a dog's nose in a mess it made. It already feels guilty. Solve, solve a mystery. Oh, what a cinch it will be. No, that's not it either. <laughs> we are all this dad. Welcome, Tata! No thanks, Doctor Who. You are a liar and a miscreant. Go back to your tree. In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate but equally important groups. The rubber-headed detectives, who investigate with a magnifying glass, and the raggedy Anns, who put that evidence inside a tiny plastic box. These are their stories. We thought the best place to start would be where I left my candy bag. I wish next door dog was here. All right, this is starting to get a little ridiculous, so let's cut this down a bit. They find a clue, it's a wrapper, and a duck. A giant standee turns into a human who teaches them how to dance. And she's somehow doing an even worse Betty Boop voice than Dory. Uh, hi. Sorry, I didn't recognize you. I'm a little dizzy. No, it's fine. You just got transmuted into reality. It happens to the best of us. All right, it's dance time. Come on, kids, and do the dizzy loo. Here's your chance to do a dance that's new. Just knock me. doing it. I'm dancing. Wait a minute, I've been suckered into another segment that doesn't have anything to do with the mystery. You tricked me again, Knock Knock Show. Shame on me this time. What next? Hi! We're visiting a factory where candy is made. Oh goody, now we're Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, but with obnoxious kids. Colors pink, yellow, orange, and blue. First, the gooey taffy is pulled and stretched while it is white. Stretch it! Stretch it! Okay, these kids are definitely part of a cult, and I want in. Stretch it! Stretch it! And then it is cut into tasty bites. Our master, stretch him! Wrapped in a paper and put into a box. Stretch her! All the candy is put in a store where we can buy it. Stretch them all! You know, I should probably be careful. This is the second children's TV cult I've signed up for in less than six months. Go away, duck! How much does this cost? That candy costs ten cents. I have a dime. A dime's worth ten cents. Now we're just counting again. Can you count to ten, kids? It was lots of fun. An enjoyable day! I'm going to go brush my teeth now. Go to hell, Judy. <laughs> Bye! Bye. Bye. <laughs> that wacky duck! I saw next door dog. Did you? Uh-huh. Yeah. Me too. That rascal. Yeah! There's no way to say this without being crude, so I'm going medical. Did we just hear the door handle defecate onto her hand? <laughs> The show plays it so fast and loose with the sound effects library. Sticky marks on this door! We to this box! 
Looks like they're in a sticky situation. This is hell. I am in hell. This is what hell is like. This is a punishment for my sins. Okay, so the thief came in, stole a lollipop, listened to some sweet tunes, and then left? That's one chill-ass burglar. It's been a busy day. What? Played really hard. I'm covered with dirt. What? What? What in God's name is this flamingo? In fact, let's leave God out of this. This abomination could only come from one place. Early era CGI. I feel like we're starting to lose the plot a little bit here. The box says it right here, learning not to steal. This is more learning to take the occasional shower and not be some kind of dirt monster. This is like authoritarian pro-bath propaganda for toddlers in a world where the government mandates two baths a day. I do want to exist in this rotating deep tub universe, though. Just spinning through space in a bubble bath, just me, the suds, the stars. Sorry, got away from myself a little bit there. Where were we? Finally back to the plot. They're finally closing in? Miss Twinkles, I'll touch that and visited Flo today. Hmm. I wish whoever took your lollipop would tell you and be honest. Well, like Mom always says, it's never too late to tell the truth. Honesty, I'm living. This show hates me. It wishes harm upon me. You can go ahead and take your lollipop, Woody. Thanks. We've already given away four, which leaves one for next door dog. Woody is a selfish jerk. He should have given his lollipop to Dory. Actually, now that I mention it, everyone should have refused the lollipop once they learned that hers was stolen. That's the value you want to be teaching, Knock Knock Show. I know it's not good for your mystery that you've kind of plotted here, but, you know, it's, dare I say, Christian? Kindness to those who have experienced hardship? Generosity to those in the face of despair? That's... I'm overthinking it, aren't I? Dory's pretty depressed. I feel bad for her. Luckily, whoever stole her lollipop is an enormous idiot. The stick is just hanging out in a closet door. There's DNA evidence, burglar. They'll put you away for that. Or she went through here. Yeah. Yeah. Come on over. Can you hear the birdies The closet has birds and a song. Cool. Cool. Imagination. I got through this life thinking that Robert Rodriguez, or that guy who made Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow, innovated the art of filming everything on a green screen and compositing people in later, but no, it was the Knock Knock Show. Or Nick Arcade. Probably Nick Arcade. Side note, have you ever read the episode descriptions on Amazon Prime for Nick Arcade? Go, go now, go look at those and then come back. You'll be glad that you did. Not gonna lie, I'm getting strong Blues Clues meets Dick Tracy vibes from this. And, uh... Stick. Right. Three people visited Flo's today. Do you remember? Yes. Yes! They're putting the pieces together. One. Wrong. Your guy. The mystery is almost solved. We can finally end this thing. In fact, Woody, you can have your badge and your gun back. Hmm. This music sounds exactly like the score to UHF. As they say, Round up the usual suspects. Ah yes, a reference to classic children's film Casablanca. I wonder who did it. Will they use their powers of deductive reasoning to solve the case? Do you know who did it? Wait, go back. <laughs> nope, they just kind of luck into it because the criminal is an idiot. You two are a couple of numbskulls. I want your badges and your guns back on my desk. Next door dog, you know what mom and dad always say. Woodrow, Dorothea, it's wrong to take something that's not yours. 
Golly, I just wanted it really, really bad. <laughs> a moment of shame for Next Door Dog, total sociopath. You know, Next Door Dog, I was gonna give you a lollipop. Really? Yeah, you didn't have to take it. And sneak around. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Do you think we should forgive him? No! Eternal suffering, banishment to the Phantom Zone! I don't know! You think we should forgive him? Yeah! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Alright, fine, but punish him, like, a little bit, maybe? A little bit? Just a smidge, a teensy bit? A little, little, little bit? A little bit? A little, a little punishment, please, for me? But you'll have to sing this song! Honestly, I'm living. Honestly, I'm happy. As can be. Nope, just punishing me. I understand. I deserve this. Honesty, it's just so plain to see that I feel the best and I'm happy. Yes, with honest me. That was fun! That was degrading, but I'm honest now, I guess, and I won't steal. Bye! See you next time! Bye! Bye. Bye. Thank you, that's the end of this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. In fact, in the comments, tell me how quickly it took you to figure out who stole the lollipop, because it literally took until they revealed who stole the lollipop for me to figure it out. Uh, hit the notification thing as well, the bell, so you know when my videos pop up, it's important to algorithms and the dystopia that we currently live in. And if you want to support me on Patreon, I would really appreciate it. It helps me keep making the show, and you can get your name here in the zone of power. Uh, that's it for this week. Uh, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Too Many Tapes.